Russia has shut off natural gas flows to Germany now indefinitely. European gas prices again reached near record highs on Monday. Russia is shutting down gas supplies from a major pipeline to Europe. As you can see, things don't look too good for Europe at the moment when it comes to energy needs. Just look at this graph on the prices of natural gas over the past years. Things have escalated pretty quickly ever since the special military operation. But the situation looks way darker for some specific countries. Look at the richest country in Europe, Germany, that depends on 66% for its natural gas supply on Russia. Or the Czech Republic, for example, that is 100% reliable on the motherland. As I mentioned in my previous videos, this is the exact reason why Germany was slow to react to the Ukrainian situation. They were simply scared during the winter to even think about doing something that could anger Moscow. France, on the other hand, didn't stand back and are now reopening all its nuclear power plants this winter in order to remain independent and away from Putin's influence. They are even willing to deliver gas to Germany if needed and connect the two powerhouses with pipelines. But that will take time. For now, they are considering building liquefied gas terminals in their ports to receive the precious gas through shipments. And that's where Africa comes in. Even though the European Union already receives natural gas from North Africa and has three major pipelines already in use, their capacity is at maximum. Norway and Algeria are not capable of matching the demand at the current moment, so the EU is looking further down. Take a look at this satellite footage off the coast of East Africa. Seems pretty quiet, doesn't it? Sandy beaches, warm water and nice weather, but nothing major happening. Until 2020, where this happens. Did you see it? Let's zoom in a little. Focus on the region between Palma and Maganja. Can you spot it? This is the liquefied natural gas project from the French company Total Energies. While a new pipeline is currently planned to be built from Nigeria to the old continent, new startups are being created in other African countries. Just take a look at this table. Three out of the five biggest projects are in Mozambique, and without a doubt, Total Energies takes the cake. The two major ones being that same area, the district of Cabo Delgado, in the north of Mozambique, and by the same company. Look at how much the nearest city has changed since the arrival of the French. Things are looking lively in the region, and investments seem to be flooding in. If we overlay the gas field over the satellite map, we start to see the real picture. These gas fields are so big that they could cover the entire region of Northern Ireland, and remember, they are deep. Not to mention that these are the only proven offshore ones, the inland and potential undiscovered ones are even greater. Some of you may remember these names, Cabo Delgado, Mozambique, Total Energies, but can't remember why. Well, let's go back to 2017. The region has been the stage of Islamic terror attacks and has made companies suspend their plans up until now. They fear that the lack of security in the region could jeopardize the entire project, but the situation with Russia has made these plans come back in full steam. Mozambique has pledged for help and has seen the neighboring African countries, the EU and the United States answer their call, with one special mention to Portugal, that has sent their special forces, the Marine and medical military personnel to fight alongside and train the Mozambican troops. To put it into perspective, Portugal has sent five times more troops than the United States. But why Portugal, you ask? Well, Mozambique was once a colony of the Portuguese Empire, and the relationship with the two countries is now as good as it has ever been. Portugal is not playing around. Okay, maybe a little bit. A third of everything that Mozambique buys from the EU comes from Portugal. The Portuguese president has recently visited the country and the prime minister signed this week 18 new cooperation acts between the two nations that will see Portugal invest 19 million euros in various projects including military training, military resources and the creation of a research and development center project for 1200 young people to educate them about oil and gas. That way, battling terrorism not only militarily but also with education. The strategic plan 2022-2026 
we put in place a package of measures to motivate, accelerate and simplify the Portuguese private sector to invest in the Mozambican economy. In addition to this package, Portugal is also investing 400 million euros in the CPLP community, the community of Portuguese-speaking countries. Plus, it opened the borders for all of the CPLP citizens to automatically get work visas and easily move to Portugal if they are not prohibited by the Schengen area. These bilateral relations and military cooperations are just what Mozambique needed for the development and security in the north of the country, and in return, Portugal will get what Europe is craving for – cheap natural gas. Because even though things look less alarming further away you go from the former Soviet lands, Countries like Portugal and Spain, for example, have still seen the prices skyrocket due to the interconnectivity of the markets. And this price hike has led energy companies to make insane profits in the past months. Let's take a look at Galp, the Portuguese energy giant, that has had an increase of $420 million on their profits margins, a 90% jump. Their plan is to ramp up production in their facilities in South America and Africa and use the new Sins Megaport to transform it into a green energy hub. Make sure to check out my video on Portugal's biggest foreign investment. Now back to the video. If you look closely, you realize that all of these countries are former colonies of Portugal, with the exception of Namibia. This close relationship between the government and private sector could help them reach their goals and rival their European counterparts. If we look next to the area 4 of the gas fields, the area that they are to explore, we realize that they are not even the main players. Total Energies have a clear head start on Area 1, and to confront them, they had to partner with all the other giants. America's ExxonMobil, Italy's Eni, Korean Kogas, and ultimately China's CNPC. Yes, that's right, Asian countries like South Korea and China are also playing a role in this scramble for Africa, the second of its kind. China already is the major trader in most of the African countries, and the influence in the region is growing exponentially, but that's a matter for another video, make sure to subscribe. Since Russia has abandoned the EU, it has redirected its search for new clients in the Asian region. The Kremlin has already offered discounted price to China and India, and is now looking beyond Africa. A move that has angered the United Nations. They claim that African nations are free to buy grain from Russia but could face consequences if they trade in the US sanctioned commodities such as oil from Russia. Russian ambassador to Mozambique proposed that the Mozambican authorities buy Russian oil in rubles and further express Russian companies continuing interest in investing in Mozambique. Likewise, the possibility was raised of Russia opening a bank in Mozambique, focused on supporting bilateral trade and investment. What Europe is trying to prevent is for African countries to sell their oil and gas to Europe and then, with that money, buy Russia's resources, that way creating a vicious cycle and making the sanctions pretty much useless. Mozambique is just an example though. The exact same thing is happening with Algeria, Angola and the Republic of Congo, among others, and the EU leaders are all flocking to these countries with promises and money. Near the tip of Nigeria's Boni Island, located in an arrowhead speck of land where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Nigeria Delta, sits a giant liquefied natural gas plant that last year produced enough fuel to eat half of the UK winter, but still most of it was shipped out of the country, with Spain, France and Portugal being the biggest buyers, while the Nigerian population struggles to escape poverty. Foreign energy giants like Shell, Eni and Total Energies that co-own the Boni Island facility along with the Nigerian government are the ones that extract all the profits of this natural resource and despite the fact that Nigeria has 3% of the world's proven gas reserves, it has tapped almost none of it. Like most African countries, what is extracted is mostly sent to Europe, which now wants to import even more to make up for the supplies lost to Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Italy, in April, struck fresh deals to buy gas from Angola, Algeria and the Republic of Congo, while Germany has been looking to secure supplies from Senegal. 
dance is by discouraging the use of all fossil fuels around the world in pursuit of global climate goals. While African leaders are eager for the millions in revenue that the gas deals are likely to bring in, they are also calling out the sudden interest in their resources as a double standard that perpetuates the West's exploitation of the region. They question why Africa must move away from dirty fuels, thereby delaying access for hundreds of millions of people to electricity, when its gas is being used to keep the lights on in Europe. Rich countries have been reluctant to fund pipelines and power plants that would facilitate the use of gas in Africa because of its emissions, yet haven't delivered on promises to help finance green projects that could be an alternative source of energy. Europe's awkward position was on display at the G7 summit a couple of months ago. The world's seven most advanced economies walked back a climate commitment to halt finance for overseas fossil fuel projects but indicated that exceptions would likely apply to projects that would allow for some shipments of LNG to their countries. In one word, hypocrisy. In another climb down, European Union lawmakers recently voted to classify gas and nuclear energy projects within the bloc as green investments, potentially opening up billions of euros in fresh funding. That approach has annoyed African leaders who need fuel any fuel to lift millions out of poverty. We need long-term partnership, not inconsistency and contradiction on green energy policy from the UK and the European Union," said Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari. It does not help their energy security, it does not help Nigeria's economy and it does not help the environment. It is a hypocrisy that must end. But all of these resources won't be for free. The feeling around Africa is the same. If any other nation wants African natural resources, they need to give something back, and no exceptions to the EU. We are talking foreign investments, trade deals, immigration reforms, infrastructure upgrades, security aid, medical cooperation, etc. If done the right way, this could be the start of something great for the African continent. The turning point that will see Africa finally turn the page on years of exploration and take the advantage of Chinese, American and European investments to make Africa great again. I'm not saying it will be easy. The unwanted corruption could very much affect the results in a negative way. But the battle between the West and East, as is China, the United States, Europe and even some countries like Japan, South Korea and India, could be advantageous for this promising continent. If everything goes to plan, this could very well encourage the countries to unite and cooperate to form the African Union and see the creation of a European-style union with a group strength mentality. But first, they will need to start small, like the Southern Africa Development Community or the East African Federation that I talked about in my previous video. Make sure to check it out and don't forget to leave a like on this one. Obrigado.